So what I've got to decide is which will be the front and which will be the back. And since it's leaning this way, I think it's better to have it so that it's leaning forward, the head come like this. I will make that out of ceramic and uh, so that I'm combining two different materials. bit like what I want it to be, but I want it to come forward but I can't get that at the moment. But now I can see what it is really supposed to do, you know, and I've got to study it, walk around it, study it, look at it, see what the wood wants to be done with it. In a way it has to, I have to communicate with the wood and vice versa. No, it's it can go either way. It can this can be the back, in which case it can be very simple here, very simple as a back, and it's like throw, throwing its head back that way. And then, and this can be the this can be the front. I think that that can work, which means I take out this part of the wood and uh, give it much more of a movement this way and the, I can throw the head back this way so yeah I think that that, that, will, that will be the better decision so I will use the chainsaw and I will start by removing the wood here Right, and then I will get more of the curve and then having done that I will determine what to do next the way I work I work in stages and I really communicate with the wood I listen to the wood you know and I, I cooperate with it rather than fight against it so that's what I think I will do. Yeah, so this is going to be a man who is, um, I suppose, tortured or some kind of emotion of that kind. And he's leaning back. It's a big piece of wood. It's not easy to manage it. But with this tackle, I can. And I don't need another person to help me. So, what I'm going to do is use the chainsaw and leave the marks that the chainsaw makes on the wood. And rather than try to smooth it out the way I did this one. Because this is, this is the way I used to work. And and this piece of work, the, the, uh, it's walnut wood and it has beautiful grains in the wood and I felt that it needed this treatment. Um, this is supposed to be like a Pandora's box since I can't make it. Um, uh, uh, all the terrible creatures have already gone out of there. It is going to be Dora's box. So. So this, this is going to be quite a contrast in treatment from this piece. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of wood. You know, it's cherry. It's going to be red. Yeah. I'm getting excited about this. You know? I, I've had this piece of wood for about six or seven years and um, it has been curing. It's, I got it from this property. And uh, 
I had planned on making something out of it, so now the time has arrived for me to make something out of it. I want more vigor in my work, I want more power in my work, and I feel that the chainsaw helps me to achieve that. And there's no reason why you have to, I have to continue doing what I used to do 40 years ago or 50 years ago or 30 years ago. I feel that I have to move forward and, um, you know, and my vision has improved and it's, it's different now from what it was in those days. So now I can, um, I can do whatever I want. I can use, if I feel that dynamite would help this, then I would probably blast it in order to get the effect of the dynamite. So, uh, now I have actually used sandblasting in order to get uh, a special effect. I'm not trying to make a very um, refined piece. I want my work to have a brutishness about it. And um, the chainsaw helps me to achieve that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chainsaw and then make marks in order to articulate the wood, make it do things, make it come alive, um, so that you can't ignore it. So, these are new ways in which I, I want to work with wood, rather than doing the, the traditional things that I have been doing. I have to break out somewhere, you know, kind of like do something that is, you know, radical. This is not as radical as wood can be. I suppose if I use things like the sawdust to make sculpture, that would be really radical. I can't keep on doing the same thing all the time. I have to change, you know, I have visions of other things that come into my mind. And once it comes into my mind, I've got to make it a reality. And um, I don't feel that I have to stick to a particular theme um, in my work, you know. I see a piece of wood and then I respond to it. I'm totally engrossed in carving, you know. So my mind focuses only on what I'm doing, whether it's the chainsaw or the carving um, with the chisel. But when I'm carving with the chisel, it's less stressful as it were. And you know, it's like I just continue taking out bit by bit. And it's a form of meditation. All art is, you know, like painting, people who are painting, they focus only on the painting. And uh, so they are meditating. I am not taking out the um, the full amount of the wood that I should remove in order to get the size that I want. I stop before I get to the size. I have to um, make it larger than I want it. At the same time, I want to utilize the wood. I don't want to start off with a big piece of wood and end up with a matchstick. So I want to utilize the largest dimensions, the height, width and depth, and, um, and also get the form within that. So th that I find very exciting to, to, um, to be working with this wood. Y you can't tell what there is in it and I am feeling my way and getting to, I am, being a, I am able to reveal this, the, the figure within this um, raw piece of wood. Take note of this mass of wood from here. Now I have to take out more from this here because I, I want the body to, to the, from the chest um, going back to the head, towards the and shoulders, kind of like going back. So I have to take out more wood here still. Now that I look at it. 
after having done that. And then the next thing will be to lift it up, turn it around and take out some from the back. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do next. Isn't it exciting to have a chainsaw in your hand and, to, and a piece of wood and you can just let loose and do whatever it is that comes to your mind? Actually, it sounds kind of dangerous. <laughs> Actually, um, that's not what I will do. I have to think before I um, use the chainsaw. I have to be responsible. You know, I've been looking for, at this for over six years. And I've been um, thinking about it, thinking about what, it, what needs to be done with it. And I, um, I had already made up my mind that it was going to be a figure. It was going to be standing on one leg. And that it was going to have, you know, a short, a short leg and a long leg, because that's what the wood was, you know, I couldn't get two long legs. And I had already made up my mind that it was going to have a ceramic head on it. And um, it was determined. So it was very easy for me to just proceed along those lines. And I, it just took me a day or two in order to get into that mindset and, and to work and towards achieving this goal. Um, I have found that that's not a good way, a good frame of mind in which to be when I'm working because it means then I have to destroy. I have to be destructive. And the only time I would do that, and I did it with my paintings, when things were not working out and I say, okay, I'm going to destroy this. And I start doing crazy things and, you know, do things uninhibitedly. And I freed up myself, you know, and I did things spontaneously. And then something good came out of it. But um, I will do that with my painting. But sculpture is something that you know, I haven't done that with my sculpture. I haven't tried to to get mad or to destroy my the, the, what is there before already uh, I, in order to make something new. I feel a real need to do art. In the same way, I feel the need to breathe and to eat and to drink liquids. Um, it's part of my life and I need to do it. And I will continue to do it until the end of my life. I read, for example, that Michael, Michelangelo worked on the Rondonini, Rondonini Pieta, which is located in Milan, um, until four days, about four days before his death. And that's, it, it's such a moving figure of the Pieta and it's, you know, I, I saw it and it's displayed with good lighting in a, in a very simple background and it was absolutely, it was very dynamic. Mm -hmm. And here was a man, 90 years old and he was making sculptures like that. And he just imbued in the sculpture the essence of the Pieta. It was not finished, but when you look at it, you you get the total message. And I was very, very much impressed with that. Like in the ceramic piece, I wanted to get voluptuous forms. And in order to get that, you have to have the round, sensuous, voluptuous forms, and as well as the, um, the lines that sort of like help to define or to give some contrast. I can't go to, to my sculpture the way someone goes to do a, a job like construction work, you know. 
to be in the mood, I have to um, think about it, I have to resolve problems. Um, when, I come, when I get problems and with the peace, I conform to, to the wood. Um, I went along with what the wood was suggesting and then I found places where I could, you know, like I wanted to make this concave area here. I wanted to get some something smaller, you know, in this area here. So I carved this form and um, and these lines. Uh, so I just respond to the material and go in the direction in which it suggests that I should go. You know, it's easier for me to do, to do the sculpture, to make it and to say what I have to say um, in wood and with the tools than it is for me to talk about it. I find it very difficult to verbalize about it because if I could say everything in words, then there's no need to make the sculpture. I could just write it down and, um, and it wouldn't have the same effect. So sculpture has to be three-dimensional, it has to be, uh, uh, um, there has to be a reality about it and the viewer has to determine um, what he sees. And this is the sensuous part of it where you really want to feel it, it's like a human body. And, um, the detail that I spoke about it's like this here and you want to kind of like put your finger through it and but it's a very small detail by con contrast to the rest of it and the detail here is also a contrast to this and a contrast to that so that's what I do you know to, to, to make a form interesting you really have to set up contrasts opposites you know large and small Towards the end, I call it celebration, like a celebration of life. It's a, like a dancing form, a happy form. Uh, and um, a sensuous form. You, know, you want to touch it, you want to feel it. So I always wanted to combine other materials with wood and since I had a knowledge of ceramics and I was doing ceramics as well, um, I decided to make this ceramic form, sculpt it out and, uh, and to make it especially to fit into this piece of wood and you have this line coming up here and going up into the wood and getting lost here and this other line coming like this and this other line going like that so um, it gives the viewer something to to it well something to hold the viewer's attention and I have gone beyond this in combining materials like this piece I come and take a look at this here where I have used the um, I have used rocks riverbed stones that I found and then I've got a piece of glass in here and I've carved an opening there and uh, um, and I've got wood, stone here and I've got ceramic here so um, we will talk about more about this later on but we will go, come back to this piece and and continue talking about it um, this is the most um, dramatic uh, view of the sculpture but then if I turn it around or rather if you I think if you if you come in here it'll be too close um, to see that this is going this way it's going forward and this is like a bird perched on the ceramic form and this is like a wing you know so I think that this is um, there's a, a dynamic to this um, shape. At this point, 
both the wood and the ceramic are very small and you've got a large bulbous foam at the bottom on which the wood can be balanced. And again, it's the, the, um, the character of the wood and the grains of the polania. That's, and it's very different in different parts of the sculpture. And, um, and that's what I like about it. That's the, the, the beauty of 